We all know Heisenberg's uncertainty relation, or maybe we've all heard of it. This relation says that there is an unavoidable uncertainty, or an error, when measuring the momentum and position together of some quantum object. There are natural limits to knowing both simultaneously. It's not just true for both of these quantities. It also applies to different pairs of physical quantities and is established in quantum theory by commutators. I want to focus on the Heisenberg relation in this form. The delta means the extent of the error. The greater the uncertainty in position, the lower the uncertainty in momentum or speed, and vice versa. De Broglie's famous relation is given in the form. It says that there exists a wave phenomenon associated with the particle. I have explained this in one previous video and represented it as De Broglie saw it, if you want to watch it. The wavelength of the particle depends on the momentum of the particle. The faster a particle or the larger its mass, the smaller its wavelength, and vice versa. Now I want to do a simple calculation called error calculation or error propagation of a function. It is a well-known formula to calculate error using differentials. I will use this to calculate the error in momentum as a function of wavelength, where f will be momentum and s the wavelength. We'll first differentiate momentum with respect to lambda. So we get. Now we substitute this in the formula above. So we have. It links the error in momentum in terms of both the wavelength and the error in measuring this wavelength. We substitute for delta p in the Heisenberg relation. Or also. To rapidly get to the point, let's take the minimal uncertainty limit, meaning we'll only consider the equal sign. Then, I'll drop this for pi. Finally we get. And here we are. An important relation that is rarely being discussed. Suppose you want to measure the position of a particle in some space. For example, you make a particle pass through a slit, whose width is delta x. If the wavelength lambda is equal to, or of the order of this space width, the left-hand side will be close to 1. The error in wavelength is equal to, or of the order of wavelength itself you want to measure. The wavelength is simply very uncertain. Which means, from the relation again, that the momentum is highly uncertain as well. Notice how the wavelength and the spatial dimensions affects how uncertain the momentum is. In the case of single slit experiment, the particle will have some wide diffraction angle, which reflects the degree of lack of certainty in the momentum direction. In other words, relative to this delta x, the wavy and quantum properties of the particle are highly prominent. Now let's do the opposite. The wavelength is much smaller than the space where the particle resides. We get this means that delta lambda is much smaller than lambda. In other words, the wavelength is pretty good certain. It also reflects the fact that the momentum is also highly certain. High energy particles have in general very short wavelengths compared to the obstacles or spatial dimensions of the systems they interact with, giving greater accuracy in determining the direction of momentum. The diffraction that occurs to such particles is not large but limited. In nuclear study labs, energies of 6 billion electron volts are used to make electrons pretty fast and with very short wavelengths. It must be shorter than the typical dimensions of the nucleus. This makes the diffraction of these electrons confined to low uncertainty, and so allows getting better details of the nuclei. It actually coincides with Bragg's formula, if you're familiar with. The shorter the wavelength, the smaller the angle of diffraction, and vice versa. This is what is meant when we say, de Broglie's wavelength makes particles behave as waves. Please don't forget to follow the channel. Thanks for watching.